What if Angel joined the story much earlier? What if she had been one of the students alongside Yuji, Megami, and Nobra? How would Jujutsu Kaisen have been different? Let's talk about it. All right, first off, manga spoiler warning, just in case that wasn't obvious. This character's not in the anime yet, so we are going to have to get into spoiler territory to talk about this what if. On top of that, we also need to talk about how Angel actually enters the story, because in the original version of events, she's a result of Kenjaku's idol transfiguration, right? The past incarnated sorcerers coming to be, if you will. So that can't be the reason in this what-if scenario, because then we would have to move Kenjaku's idol transfiguration moment much earlier in the story, and that just doesn't really make sense. That changes everything, right? So for the purposes of this, we are just going to assume that somehow Angel incarnates in Hannah earlier on her own without Kenjaku's help. Now, pick your poison. It doesn't really matter as to why, but that's what we're assuming. And then we are assuming that they enroll in Jujutsu Tech, um, and it's is after Yuji eats the first finger. So that's our baseline where we're starting from. Okay, so this is a game changer, right? And it's because of Angel's curse technique, which is nullification. The ability to terminate other curse techniques, but not just curse techniques, basically any jujutsu. Seals, barriers, cursed objects. Her curse technique can destroy them. And yes, I said cursed objects, which would include Sukuna's fingers. And Angel's, like, main mission in the Cullen games is to destroy the other incarnated sorcerers because she thinks they're an abomination, but especially Sukuna, who she calls the Fallen One. So if she joins Jujutsu Society after Yuji has already incarnated and eaten a finger, Angel is going to want to take Yuji out. But we'll get to that in a second. The more important thing is that the other Sukuna fingers that Jujutsu High has, she can just destroy. Depending on when this comes in, like how many of Jujutsu High's fingers has Yuji eaten at this point? Probably two, if we're going to assume the rest of the events are playing out like they are. So she could destroy the other ones they have before, you know, Kenjaku and Mahito steal the rest of them along with the Cursed Womb Death paintings, right? She could also destroy the Cursed Womb Death paintings. So assuming Angel would be on board and the Jujutsu higher-ups would just immediately have her act on these things, which I think both of those would be true, then all the rest of the Sukuna fingers, all of the cursed wound death paintings, and any other like cursed objects that they wanted to get rid of would just be gotten rid of. See ya, Choso. But now let's address the elephant in the room, because at least one or two of the fingers are going to be in Yuji already at this point, and Angel is not going to stand for that. Hannah, I think, will, you know, grow fond of Yuji. There will be students together going on missions, potentially, you know. I think Hannah will really like Yuji, but Angel's not going to be swayed. Her mission is to take down Sukuna, right? So whether it's secretly or not, she is going to be planning to take him down. However, I don't think she ever will, because good luck, right? Just like Gojo was protecting Yuji from the higher-ups, he would protect him from Angel as well. Now, how he's going to do this, is he going to be around 24-7? Probably not, but let's be real. Gojo could get the job done. Like, he's just not stupid either, so he's not going to be like, all right, Yuji, you and Angel go on a solo mission this weekend. Like, you know, Gojo, he could protect Yuji from them. This what-if scenario isn't all happiness and rainbows, though, because we gotta think about what Kenjaku and Sukuna would be doing in this situation. Kenjaku, first of all, is not gonna stand for this, right? He's been planning for literally hundreds of years to set things up. So if Angel enters the scene and is gonna disrupt that by potentially destroying fingers, destroying cursed objects, or, you know, being an answer to the prison realm, he cannot have that, right? So Angel's gonna become priority numero uno on the hit list. And so I don't know how long Angel survives because Kenjaku's got the means and the brains to get that done, in my opinion. And as far as like, well, Gojo would protect her. I don't know that he would, and not because he like wouldn't want to, but because he wouldn't realize that he needs to. Because at that point in the story, Gojo doesn't know who Kenjaku is. He's not aware of any of those machinations going on, right? So if Angel goes out on a typical mission, you know, as long as Gojo specifically is not with her, then Kenny's going to be able to take her out. So it's more of a question of how soon can Kenny get on that and what damage does Angel do beforehand that then disrupts all of the rest of the story, right? And that's impossible to know, but I absolutely think he would be on this as soon as he found out. 
Similarly, Sukuna is not just going to sit idly by and watch his fingers get destroyed and wait for his death sentence, right? As soon as he realizes Angel is on the scene and a threat to what he's got going on, he's going to make a move. And given the timeline of this what-if scenario, I think he and Yuji would have already made the Enchain Binding Vow. Because... The scenario assumes Yuji's at least already eaten one finger, so unless Angel joins like literally the same day Yuji does, then it stands to reason that the second finger in the juvenile detention center would have also already happened. So I think they would have had this binding vow. So Sukuna is going to invoke this and switch bodies before he just gets taken out. So whose body is he going to enter? Maybe it's still Megami's, maybe it's not. He can't be picky, right? If he does go into Megami's body, then he's going to have some other issues because, right, Sumiki's not going to be dead at this point. The bath won't be ready for him to go take, and he's at far fewer fingers in general. But again, that's not really the point. The point is he's just going to get in another body and get the hell out of there as soon as his back's against the wall. So what wrench does that throw in the potential storylines? However, if this specific line of events does play out where Sukuna jumps bodies and Kenjaku takes out Angel, then they better hope that Gojo cannot find them because he will absolutely destroy them at this point in the story, right? And whoever Sukuna jumps into, like even if it's Megami, unfortunately, I think Gojo will still take them out. He obviously didn't take out Yuji because Yuji was a prison for Sukuna and Gojo wanted to look for another way around this. But in somebody like Megami or some random person that Sukuna incarnates in, then there's no coming back for Megami, right? Because Sukuna has fully incarnated and taken over. And there's no angel to potentially, you know, get rid of of the cursed object influence anymore, nor do they know about Yuji's like soul punches at this point. So in their mind, there would be no way to safely retrieve Megami or whoever the vessel was. So yeah, Gojo would be a huge problem for them. So how does this affect the story? How do those events shape out, right? Well, it largely depends on how quickly Kenjaku and Sukuna can react to Angel entering the scene. But even if they react immediately, like let's say they are able to take Angel out before she destroys any of the fingers and messes with their plans at all, I still think this paves the way for a happier JJK, at least in the immediate term, because if nothing else, that's going to put Gojo and everyone else on high alert, right? If Angel just gets taken out, there's a lot of questions about like, what's going on? Who were those people? Like, let's figure this out. And so I don't think Gojo gets trapped in the prison realm if this line of events happens and Angel gets taken out, which then causes a whole new slurry of issues, right? So I think that, you know, the events may ultimately play out the same, but I think it takes a long time for Kenjaku to like readjust and get a new plan in order. So again, for the short term, I think this is a much happier JJK, but, you know, given Sukuna and Kenjaku's intelligence, I feel like they might ultimately still be able to get the job done, whether it's 10, 20, or another thousand years from now. So yeah, that's my two cents on it. Special shout out to Vinegar for the question and for the support. Thank you so much, and I'll see y'all in the next one.